We've got some more calculations in homework 12 here. Uh, this time we've got, uh, for the first three, we've got some calculating quantities uh, calculations, uh, mole calculations. Um, they are they're multi stage, each stage is fairly straightforward, but putting them together is difficult, they are challenging. So, uh, so uh, hopefully, I can unstuck you, unstick you if you are a bit stuck on, a, on any of these. Okay, so as with the other videos for the homeworks, I'm not going to give you the answers to these exact questions. We'll go, I, I will put a similar one here and work through the similar one. Hopefully you can copy the method. Let's just read this question. Though. It says, when calcium carbonate, CaCO3, this stuff, is heated, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are formed. Calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are formed. What is the maximum mass of calcium oxide that can be formed from 50 grams of calcium carbonate? Now, the first thing I want you to do, and I'll do this for this question, is I want you to put this information on that equation, because that's it, that it is helpful if we do. So the question says, what is the maximum mass of calcium oxide? That's the calcium oxide, so that's the question. Okay, that's what we're trying to find out, put a question mark there. Can be formed from 50 grams of calcium carbonate. Well, that's the calcium carbonate, 50 grams. So I, I, I would always decorate that equation, and we can cross out the carbon dioxide, because that's not involved. That's a great first step. OK, well, I'm going to do a different question. Let's imagine we, I mean, I'm doing this equation here. I've got lithium, OK, and that's reacting with oxygen uh, to make lithium oxide. Uh, and my question is, and let's put my atomic masses in uh, for that as well. So the AR of lithium is 7 and oxygen is 16. OK, uh, let's imagine my question says, if I've got 14 grams, 14 grams of lithium, how much lithium oxide is made? So that's my question. OK, now all these questions uh, have the same stages there. Moles, stoichiometry, moles. So one of the first things I want you to do is write number one, moles equals mass. Uh, and it's over formula mass or atomic mass, depending on what you're starting with. You're starting with a, a formula, so you can put MR. I'm starting with an atom, so I'm going to put AR. OK, uh, but it doesn't matter if you write M off both, I suppose. Just this equation, that's, that's the important thing. So in the first stage, we need to calculate moles. Second stage, we're going to work on the stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the big numbers. OK, so the big numbers like the 4 and the 2, and there's a 1 there before O2 come into play with stoichiometry. Uh, and the third stage is rearranging the moles equation. So we're going to rearrange it to make mass the subject because we're trying to find mass. It says uh, what is the maximum mass of calcium oxide. So we'll try to find the mass of this. We need to make mass as subject to this moles equation. It's going to be moles times formula mass. Okay, there are three stages. So let's do it for this one here. If I start with 14 grams of lithium, how much lithium oxide is made? First thing, moles. You calculate the moles of whatever you have written the mass under. I wrote the mass under the lithium, so I'm going to calculate the moles of that. In this question here, the second one, it says how many grams of magnesium, so we we'll put the question mark under the magnesium, are required to make 10 grams of magnesium oxide, 10 grams of that. So when, when you do this second question, in this first stage, which will be number one, moles, and this time it will be mass over MR. So in the question number two here, you're going to calculate the formula mass of whatever you've written the mass under. That's that one. That's the product. So whatever you wrote the mass under, that's what you calculate the moles of in the first stage. OK, so uh, 14 grams of lithium. So that's the mass, 14. Now, the atomic mass of lithium that's up here is 7. 14 divided by 7 equals 2 moles. And that would get you one mark out of three. OK, uh, in this example here, you're going to calculate moles of magnesium oxide. Now, a classic mistake people make is they say, well, there's four lithium, so I need four times seven is 28. Well, let's just imagine you're part, you, 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 there's a, you're, you're part of, you're a part, one part of a quadruplet. You have three identical brothers or sisters, okay? If you want to weigh yourself in the morning, do you need to get all, four, all three brothers and sisters and yourself to stand on the scales together, have a big huddle on the scales to see your mass? No, you don't. You weigh your mass without them. OK, and that's the same when doing this first stage here. The big numbers come into play with stoichiometry. So let's write out, we can cross out the oxygen, remember, here, because we, uh, we had no information about it. So let's just write out here now the part of the equation that we're interested in. OK, so I've just written out that and that. OK, now we've calculated we have got two moles of lithium. So let's write that two under this. Now, the equation tells us four moles of lithium makes two moles of lithium oxide. So now we're using these big numbers. So to get from four to two, 
we had to divide by two, we had, we're halving it in other words. This is a halving relationship. So in this stoichiometry stage, we're looking at the relationship between the big numbers. Now, if these numbers were the same, to, uh, whatever moles you work out here would be the same here. Okay, so 2 moles lithium would be 2 moles lithium oxide, if those numbers were the same. This time they're not the same. To get from there to there, we have to divide by 2. So we have to take 2 and divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 moles of lithium make 1 mole lithium oxide. Okay, so you just need to look at that relationship. Here, those numbers are the same. And you may say, well, this is more difficult, this one because we're going backwards. Well, it's, it's absolutely identical. Okay, two moles of magnesium oxide are made by two moles of magnesium. We're just looking at the relationship between those numbers, going that way this time. So if that were a four there, to get from two to four, we'd have to multiply by two, but it's not. In this example here, you also have to work backwards, and the numbers are different, so have a think about that. Right, so stage two is done. One mole of lithium oxide is made. So that is a crucial answer that we're going to now take through to stage three. Because mass equals moles times MR. Moles is one. We've just worked that out there. Okay, so that one goes in there. And now we need uh, the formula mass of lithium oxide. Now remember this big two doesn't count now because we dealt with the big numbers in stage two. We've got two lithiums and one oxygen. So that is going to be... Uh, the MR, so we need to calculate the forming mass of lithium oxide. So we've got two lithiums and one oxygen. Well, one lithium is seven, so seven plus seven plus the 16 for oxygen, 16, so uh, 14 and 16 equals 30. Uh, one times 30, therefore, is our answer. So the answer is 30 grams of lithium oxide. Okay, uh, for my question, that's not the answer to your question. You need to do that on your own. Okay, difficult questions, though. Let's see how you go. Two and three are the same. Uh, just uh, just different examples and working backwards and uh, that's working backwards with a one-to-one -one stoichiometry this is working backwards with a different stoichiometry uh, next question 40 tons of iron oxide is displaced by 21 tons of carbon monoxide to make 28 tons uh, of iron and 33 tons of carbon dioxide what's the stoichiometry of this reaction so using these masses you need to work out the stoichiometry okay so we're going to do four uh, four different calculations here Okay, one for iron oxide, one for carbon monoxide, one for iron, and one for carbon dioxide. And for each one, it's going to be moles equals mass divided by uh, formula mass for iron oxide. Uh, so we need to take the mass, which is going to be 40 tonnes. It's got a unit after it, so it's a mass. Divided by the formula mass, um, where if you work that out, we've got two irons. Now one iron is 56, so 56 and 56 is 112. And we've got three oxygens, Fe2O3, three oxygens. Well, one oxygen is uh, 16. So we've got three times 16 is 48. 48 and 112 is going to be 160. So that's going to be 0 0.25. Okay, so that will be 0 0.25 there. Okay, so we need to work that out for every one of those. And then we need to compare these numbers. Let's say I've got, uh, what, when you do that for carbon monoxide, the answer turns out to be one. It's not one. OK, and we were just doing the stoichiometry. We then look at these numbers and say, uh, which is the biggest? Answer this one. OK, so this is the smallest. So how much bigger is this number? Well, one is four times bigger uh, than iron oxide. So the stoichiometry there will be one to four. And we write the smallest possible whole numbers down here. So we're looking at that relationship. But that's the stage you have to do first. You need to do that for each one and then compare those, those, those numbers. The answer to that second one isn't one. Okay, so, so it's, it, it is different. So um, work at that first and then look at the relationship. We've got an empirical formula question here. It's a slight sting in this one, a slight twist in this one, I should say, I suppose. Uh, is you haven't been given mass, you've been given percentage. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't change the way we do the empirical uh, mass uh, calculation. Um, this time we've got copper, sulphur and oxygen. So we've got three. So we're going to divide the piece of paper into three. OK, and for each one you write moles equals mass over atomic mass. And you, you might be saying to me right now, but I don't have a mass. We don't need a mass in this case because we're only looking at the relationship between the three of them. OK. Uh, and this time we do it for copper over here, sulphur here, and oxygen here. Well, we're going to take as mass, because it's 39.8% by mass. 
So we're going to take the mass as 39.8. So just put that in there like so. Divided by the atomic mass 63.5. Now whatever that is, okay, um, that is, go, you can work that out. Um, that's going to be, a, that's obviously a fraction and that, that would be that in the formula, okay? Um, what we're looking at once we've got all these numbers is the relationship between those numbers, okay? Now, the, we're told here the formula is CuSO4, so we're told there's one copper, one sulphur, and four oxygens. So hopefully you'll be able to prove that that number there, once you've worked it out, that number there is the same as this number here for the sulphur. Okay, and that will prove copper and sulphur in the same ratio. And this number here for the oxygen, well, it should be a factor of four different, and you hopefully you can prove that. So that's an empirical formula calculation. And the last part, uh, we've got this table again. Now this table was uh, uh, was uh, previously uh, in a previous homework, so uh, hopefully it should be okay. But let's quickly talk through it again. Um, we've got four atoms or ions here, uh, and what you'll need is you'll need to look at the periodic table. Uh, let's imagine I'm doing this for, I don't know, should I, do? I, I imagine I'm doing it for fluorine, shall I? I'll do it for fluorine. Okay, so fluorine has got a, a mass number of 19 and an atomic number of 9. You need to source this information from the period table. You don't need to remember it. Okay, mass number 19, atomic number 9. Okay, so just fill this in from the period table for those, for those four there. Now, the number of protons, number of protons equals the atomic number, uh, and the number of electrons equals the number of protons, because the protons are positively charged, the electrons are negatively charged. Uh, now, the number of neutrons, well, that is uh, going to come from the mass number. The mass number is, a, is the combination of protons and neutrons present. So, in fluorine, there is in total 19 protons and neutrons. Now, we know nine of them are protons, so 19 minus 9 is 10 neutrons. Those two numbers there need to total that, okay? Uh, and that's for the fluorine atom. If we were doing it for the fluoride ion, the protons and neutrons are identical, okay, because the nucleus never changes in ions. The atomic number never changes because the number of protons and nucleus hasn't changed, so the number of protons is the same. The number of neutrons is also the same because the nucleus doesn't change, but the number of electrons does. When we have an ion, they've gained or lost electrons. If this is the fluoride ion, the F minus ion, it's got it's gained a negative charge. Well, electrons are negative charges, so that 9 would need to go to 10, and that's the fluoride ion. So do treat these ions carefully, okay? The atoms are possibly a bit easier, but treat the ions carefully. The electron number is going to be different. It will be increased if it's negative and decreased if it's positive.